It's really not if there's going to be another pandemic, it's when. In terms of Ebola, we're in a period of very intensified, urgent action across a spectrum of technologies, vaccines, therapies, diagnostics, medical products, PPEs, things like that. And it's coming against the backdrop of a fairly low and languishing period. It feels like we're in Groundhog Day. We're seeing the same thing happen again and again. What is it that we really need to do to prevent and look forward to that next pandemic that we're going to be dealing with? I mean, this is the classic problem of what we refer to as a low probability, high impact event. When you have a problem like this, in some sense, the right answer for the federal government is yes. What it should do is do multiple things simultaneously, giving people contracts to actually build real things. I think we need the world to help us prioritize, and we need to find new ways where we actually start early conversations with innovators. We need such a broad mix of, of brains in the pool. How the, the, the private sector and the public sector work together, I think time of crisis, we see a lot of innovation. We need a constant discussion of priorities here and then you need the ability to fund people who are actually doing things. What I would love to do is, is work with you and, and, uh, and Sam and other people on the, uh, on the call that have domain expertise in here to build that consortium you mentioned. We're first getting, getting an assessment of who, who are the players. Like two is get those people in a room and then go out into the field and, and prove this out with real science. Creating a, a standing capacity and exercising it on an annual basis, the same way the military does around a number of different areas. The military puts an enormous amount of emphasis on training and on training on scenario. And I think that fits with everything we've discussed here in terms of thinking about the next um, epidemic.